Believe it or not, there was once a time when even the biggest college teams had an incentive to play against good opponents. In 2023, eventual national champions Michigan started off the season with non-conference games against who? East Carolina, UNLV, and Bowling Green, and they were all at home. Now compare that to 1984, that's when Jim Harbaugh's Michigan Wolverines hosted the number one ranked Miami Hurricanes for their first game of the season. The 1980s weren't some sort of magical time in college football, of course. I mean, there were programs then that scheduled easy teams at the beginning of the season. In fact, there always have been. However, one problem that we've had in the playoff era has been this lack of incentive to schedule non-conference games with teams that are really good. I'm not sure that you would see a game like this even scheduled if it were today. Harbaugh was making his first college start, and he was up against Bernie Kosar, who was almost certainly the leading Heisman Trophy candidate at the time. Kosar had amassed an incredible 629 yards in two games against top-notch opponents Auburn and Florida. As good as Miami's offense was, however, its defense was just as questionable. In contrast, defense was Michigan's strength, and they returned 8 of their 11 starters from 1983. In fact, in contrast to Bernie Kosar's all-out passing attack, Michigan's often stayed mostly on the ground, which isn't too different from what they do today. Michigan was coming off a strong 1983 season, one that ended in a disappointing loss to Auburn in a defensive Sugar Bowl. There was one other factor in Michigan's favor, that was its home field advantage. Well over 100,000 fans turned out for this huge matchup. Interestingly enough, this was also the first ever meeting between these two teams. That's kind of hard to believe. I mean, 1984 wasn't really that long ago. These teams had never met before then. Let that sink in. Michigan won the coin toss and elected to defer. And Bernie Kosar picked up right where he left off. Running back Alonzo Highsmith added in a strong running game and it looked like Miami was destined to score early. But then this play was ruled a catch and a fumble. Now what do you think? Should this have been called incomplete? In contrast, Michigan elected to run on first down, sticking with that traditional Big Ten mentality. Jim Harbaugh in his first quarterback start looked good on his first pass. And then Michigan showed off its own passing game. Harbaugh looked great here. It was Bob Perryman scoring the first touchdown for Michigan. However, Michigan inexplicably missed the extra point. Do you remember a few years ago when they moved the extra point back because it was too easy? I guess that wasn't the case in 1984. Miami came right back through Highsmith and took a good tackle just to stop him. And then Miami really started to get into its groove. However, Doug Mallory intercepted the first Bernie Kosar mistake of the afternoon. Yeah, spoiler alert, there's going to be a lot of that coming. It looked like Michigan might romp straight through Miami. However, Michigan's pass blocking was a little bit suspect. Harbaugh lost nine on this sack. When Miami had the ball again, still down 6 nothing, it looked like Highsmith was still going to run Michigan right out of the game. But then Bernie Kosar fumbled and Michigan recovered. It really wasn't a great day for Bernie. This sack put him back 11 yards. Michigan then intercepted him for the second time on the very next play. And after another punt, Michigan's blitz was able to sack Kozar yet again. You know, Miami's offense in 1984 was a lot like the BYU offense I remember watching in 1990 and 1991. I mean, they would pass first and then run occasionally. It didn't work all that well, of course, when the defense was expecting it. The offensive statistics were pretty much dead even at halftime, and Michigan still led by that slim 6 to nothing margin. But Miami started to come back after Michigan's first third quarter possession went nowhere. 
Kozar found Eddie Brown wide open for the touchdown, and Miami was up 7-6. to six. Jim Harbaugh had moments of brilliance like this one. However, the Miami defense was able to break through the line and get him from time to time. And then there was this excellent interception from Miami. Michigan's defense held them, though, and Miami had another three and out. Harbaugh came right back for Michigan. And then Bob Perryman came up with this monster run. There was another good run after the catch for Michigan here for another first down. Now Michigan probably should have scored here, but Darrell Fullington made one of the most brutal tackles I've ever seen. Bob Perryman scored in the very next play, and that made it 12-7. And then Michigan went for two, but they were stopped short. It was Highsmith again for Miami taking it up the middle here. Kozar tried to pass on the very next play and was intercepted for a third time. Now, if you've been paying attention, we've seen Kozar make a number of mistakes in the two games before this one. However, in this game, he just seemed totally off. I mean, nothing was working for him. Miami's defense was up to the task, though, and Michigan went three and out again. It took a great defensive play to stop Highsmith from scoring a touchdown here. With Highsmith running like this, you've got to wonder why they bothered passing so much. Near the beginning of the fourth quarter, Miami had a crucial third and four and didn't make it. So they went for it on fourth down instead of kicking the field goal. That was a big mistake. Harbaugh looked excellent here. But then Julio Cortez intercepted for Miami. This was another huge play. Kozar looked good on this pass. And Highsmith pushed hard to make sure Miami got the first down. However, in a desperate passing situation, Kozar threw his fourth interception of the game. You can see on this play that Michigan's offensive line was winning the battle. Michigan was also trying to run time off the clock. And now comes the interesting bit. Michigan scored a field goal to make it 15 to seven, but there was a flag on the play. Turns out the flag was for roughing the kicker and the five yards was just barely enough for a first down. Michigan scored a touchdown right afterwards, making it 18 to seven. And they made the extra point this time around. It's now 19 to seven. Well, we've reached that point of time in the game where the great players stand and deliver. The question is, will Kozar prevail? Bernie had his magic working here. And man, this one was just incredible. But now here's the question for you. Should this have been pass interference? Miami threw another incomplete pass on the next play. And then came the big touchdown pass on 4th and 10. So that made it 19 to 14 Michigan with about 7 minutes left. Harbaugh came out strong in the next possession and it looked like Michigan might be able to run the clock down. However, Michigan decided to continue to pass instead of running, which brought up a tough fourth down. And then came what might have been the biggest mistake of the game. Miami's punt returner decided to take it out of the end zone instead of letting it roll, and that put the offense in an awful situation. On the very next play, Kozar was intercepted by Rodney Lyles. This was Lyles' second interception of the game and the fifth one that Kozar had thrown. In the end, Michigan settled for the field goal. So it was now 22 to 14. It wasn't quite out of reach, but time was running out. Miami's first play was a desperation pass that was almost intercepted. And then it happened. Rodney Lyles had his third interception of the game and Kozar had thrown his sixth pick.
There was a lot of soul searching in Miami after this loss, especially since it came on the back of an amazing eight turnovers. In Michigan, meanwhile, there was elation, and there was a feeling that this was a sign of even better things to come. Well, in my opinion, this game was really a forgotten classic, and it's a whole bunch of fun to watch. I really recommend checking out the complete game if you haven't seen it yet.